Hi you guys, I hope you're having a great Sunday. I'm super excited. I'm gonna have Dr. Natalia Grindler on shortly. And we're just gonna basically take a deep dive into fertility. Um, she's so fabulous and I really hope you guys are gonna enjoy our conversation. And I think I'd like to have her on more often just to come on and kind of share her perspective about life and you know how she um, gets grounded and her perspective on fertility and how she approaches her practice. So I'm gonna bring her on right now. She should be coming on in a second. Here she is. Hi, Natalia. It's so nice to see you. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Amy. It's great to see you. Awesome. So for those of you who don't know Natalia, first of all, go over to her Instagram and click follow because you're going to just learn so much like I do. And um, I just want to share a little bit about you. So you're double board certified in OBGYN, reproductive endocrinology and fertility. Um, you use evidence-based medicine to enhance for your patients, fertility naturally with diet and lifestyle recommendations. You're also a mom to three boys. And I love watching you in the outdoors because, um, oh my God, those views are gorgeous. Your outdoor <laughs> adventures keep you grounded and you currently live in Denver and practice with Conceptions Reproductive Associates of Colorado. So welcome. Thank you again for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Amy. I'm so excited to talk. Awesome. So, you know, I know you like to myth bust and that's something that you do just like I do. And I know you talk a lot about birth control pills, unexplained infertility and age. Can you just tell us some of the myths that you hear the most often and what are your most favorite to talk about? Yeah. So there are a lot of myths out there in our patients. And I think part of that is because there's so much shame and stigma in our field in general. So I think that as women, we we think that if we blame ourselves, we can potentially control the outcome. Um, if only I you know, hadn't gone on a walk after embryo transfer, then maybe I wouldn't have had the pregnancy loss. And so I think it's really important for us to realize that it's just not true. So the most common one that I probably bust every day is that couples really don't think they're trying to conceive until they're using like a tracking device. And so I want to make sure, you know, if you're having unprotected sexual relations, meaning you're not using contraception, then you're trying to conceive. And so many couples, by the time they meet with me, they're like, oh, it's been four years, not six months. Um, another one that's really common is that, you know, this idea of, well, my mom had me in her 40s, so I don't expect to have problems getting pregnant in my 40s. But if you think of your mom's world in the 40s, it's very different than the world that we're living in now for lots of reasons. And so I think that's another important one. Yeah. And you've done a lot of research looking at toxins. And I want to talk to folks a little bit about your research and, and the impact of toxins on our bodies. And can you tell us a little bit about the impact on fertility? Yeah, absolutely. So when we talk about toxins, what I'm specifically referring to are something called endocrine disrupting chemicals, which are chemicals in our environment that all of us are exposed to, and they can have real impacts on how our hormones function. And so the research that I did when I in my academic career was really looking at how certain chemicals in plastics called phthalates can impact women, specifically how our ovaries work. And so there are real impacts that we see. So, you know, women who are exposed to higher level of phthalates go through menopause early. But we also know that these phthalate exposures have also been associated with problems with IVF, meaning their embryos don't grow as well, or we don't get as many eggs from women who have higher phthalate exposures. Um, and that there are other obstetrical complications associated with this as well. And what can people do? Or like, what are, what's like a quick checklist that you can tell me right now and I can just quickly just go through my house, my diet, like what are some things people can do immediately to reduce their exposure? Yeah, start in the kitchen. So in the kitchen, get rid of storing any your food in any plastic containers, get glass containers instead. Um, get rid of any plastic water bottles, you really wanna use glass instead. And then avoid buying anything with fragrance added to it. So if something has a strong scent, then you probably shouldn't be putting it on your body or in your air into your house. Got it. So I shouldn't put it on my clothes. What about just on my clothes? No. no, no. Avoid it altogether, please. Okay. Okay. Um, and one of the most common questions I get, and I'm sure it's something that you get too, like, what should I eat? Like, what's the best diet? What do you tell your patients? 
Yeah, I tell my patients that the healthier you are before starting fertility treatments, the more likely things will be successful. So what I do is I encourage healthy eating, which is in general, more of like a Mediterranean style diet. So avoiding processed foods, eating more fruits and vegetables, less meat. If you're eating grains, eat whole grains. So really just simplifying what you're putting into your body um, in general from a health standpoint. Love it. Good. And then you're, you're also just such a positive person and you have like, like me and I, I don't like to use, I like to use the word, I'm, I'm very optimistic. And, um, you know, I've heard you use the term neutral and I love that about mm -hmm. neutral facts and how our bodies are full of neutral facts. Can you teach us a little bit about that type of outlook and your, your mantra that guides you from day to day to keep yourself feeling optimistic and positive for your patients? Absolutely. So I think all people should learn about, you know, this idea of that I learned from life coaching is that, you know, as and but I think in particular women, we tend to assign emotional thoughts to everything. And these thoughts dictate how we feel. And then that dictates our actions, which leads to results. The truth is, we have so much more control over our thoughts and our results than we ever realized. So, you know, I'll give an example about fertility, but if you just think of a snowstorm, which I shared about in my Instagram, a spring snowstorm can be interpreted as annoying, another delay in an already frustrating year that you don't have control over. Or you can interpret a snowstorm as awesome. I get to do a snow angel today. And so which one feels better? Which one is the kind of outlook you want on life? So similarly with fertility treatments, it's important we keep facts as facts. Your ovarian reserve or your egg number is a neutral fact. If your ovarian reserve is low, you can be devastated and have feelings of grief, shame, or guilt. Or you can be empowered and express gratitude that you found out now, as opposed to five years from now, and that you have treatment options. Which one feels better? Which one is serving you and your goals more? I know what I'm going to choose. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. All of the things that you're saying are awesome. And then one of the things I learned from your social media page and also talking to you is that you took a break recently from social media and came back refreshed. Can you teach us some lessons that you learned during that time? Yeah, I think I, I feel like in medicine in general, it's we delay so much. So I was so focused on achieving my successful career at a young age that I was hoping that I didn't have to do take care of myself, that I could just like brush it under the rug because we're used to sacrificing things for medical training or as parents or as children of aging parents, right? We're used to putting other people first. And I think a major life change I needed was I needed to be authentic with where I was and focus on myself and healing. So I needed to really reset my intentions for my use of social media. And that was exactly what I needed. I had to take a total break and be like, why am I doing this? What message am I actually trying to get across before I could come back and realize that I'm going to get to choose how I want to live my life, spend my energy and use my time. And part of that is... I'm really excited for my use of social media because I feel like I have so much to, to share. You certainly do. Absolutely. And is there anything else you'd like to share with our for folks who are watching us right now? Yeah. So I just want to leave you with some positivity. Anyone who's going through a hard time, stay true to yourself. Do what you need to do. Um, you'll get through this. I promise. Love it. So everyone, you got to follow Natalia. And where can people find you again? Can you share that with us? Yeah, so it's Natalia Grindler, so N-A-T-A-L-I-A -A Grindler, G-R-I-N-D-L-E-R -E underscore M-D at, on Instagram. Awesome. Well, thank you, Natalia, for being with us today on this Sunday. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day weekend, and I'll be looking out for some pictures of your next hike. Really <laughs> beautiful views that you share with us. Thank you. I'm the luckiest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll see you later. Bye, Bye. Natalia. Bye-bye.